Welcome back to another OpenTunes tutorial. In this video, we're going to be creating a basic animation that's going to help us learn about levels and different drawings within our levels and how those drawings interact with the X sheet or timeline. This is really important to understand, and once you can wrap your head around it, um, OpenTunes just becomes much more usable and you're just going to get a lot less frustrated. So to get started, let's click the brush tool. I want to call your attention to this levels right now. So it says no current level. What we need to do before we really do anything, we should always just create a level. You should get in the habit of going to File, New Level. But I want to show you that if you don't do that, um, it's really easy to accidentally create a level. Because if we just start drawing here, we've just accidentally, or maybe intentionally, but we've just created a level called Level B. And so Level B now has one drawing. This is drawing of this circle. And we can drop down and select and toggle between whether we're in no level or B. So we can select any level here. Oh, this is a good thing, time to point out too. If we just click on our drawing, so not our timeline, but our drawing, it shows just what we have drawn. It shows only what we've drawn or what we've imported in, in this level. So that's why we're not seeing the white background. We're not seeing the dotted line here that says camera one, because we didn't draw camera one. We didn't draw this red dotted line. We didn't do this red X in the center of the canvas. So if we want to see just what we have drawn, we just click here. And since it's a vector, it doesn't matter where it is or how large it is. I'm zooming in and out with my scroll wheel to kind of do this. It doesn't really matter. And so if we want to draw something else, the way these levels work, if I click down here, I have an, a new blank canvas sort of. I can just click and I can draw something. Maybe I want to have like a tree happening in my animation. So I can just start to draw like a tree here that I want to be able to use in my background. Okay, cool. And I come down and click down here on a new drawing under my level. And don't confuse the drawings here with what's happening in the timeline. There's no order, there's no sequential anything happening here. It's just a drawing. So this is a cloud that I'm going to have in, as part of my scene. And then maybe I want to have um, some, you know, sort of some mountains like this with like a hill happening here as my main part of my scene. And then I'll, I'll, work all, I'll work all this stuff in in a minute here to actually be in the frame. But so let's just say I have those things. What else what is kind of nice to have? Let's click here. Let's do like the sun. And again, I'm not paying any attention to how large this is or where it is because we can change all of that later. So now I have a couple different drawing things here. They're all sort of different sizes and just sort of randomly floating here in space. And if I want to see what they look like relative to my frame, I can actually put them in a frame. So right now I only have one drawing in my frame. Drawing one is in frame one. And so that's why it's showing this the border, it's showing the extents of, the, of what we'll see when we actually render it out. And it ha we have this circle here. If we want to see the tree instead in frame one, we can double click and just type in two and hit enter. Now we see that the tree is there. If we want to see the cloud, we double click and hit three. So what this is telling us is in frame one right now, we are showing from level B drawing number three, which is a cloud. If I want to do drawing number five, I can just double click and type five and hit enter. And now we're seeing from level B, we're seeing drawing number five. And so let's say we want to do, let's do, let's actually do this number four, double click and do four. So I want to have this be the main part, and it's sort of not exactly where I want. I want this to be more centered. So we can move this by clicking here on this Animate tool. And this is a tool we're going to use quite a bit. So we'll click on that, and right now we can change, by default it's position, but we can change lots of things, size, rotation. But let's just do position, and then we can click on the center part, and we can move it to here. And if we needed to, we could scale it a little bit as well. To be a different size. So I'll just scale it just so that those the edges of this barely go outside of the, the canvas that we're working on. That's pretty good. And maybe I will actually move it down. I'll go back to the animate tool and we'll move it. So notice I'm actually moving the drawing. This can imagine this drawing is drawn on top of a like a plastic, a clear sheet of paper. And so we we could have come in here and selected the whole thing and then tried to resize it. But I didn't do that. That's not the way I wanted to do it. We, we, could have, we could have moved it and resized it. And if we actually do that, now it's going to mess it up in our frame over here. And that's why, instead of changing the actual drawing, I just used the Animate tool 
to change where the drawing is located in our in our animation. Does that make sense? I think it will in a second here. So let's bring in the sun. We want the sun to be um, also in line with this. So we'll put it in column two. We'll left click the sun and we'll drag it over to column two, frame one. So now it's overlapping. It looks kind of weird now, but we can actually go to uh, scale and we can change the size. Oops, control Z. I was accidentally on the wrong one. So now we can change the size of the sun. We'll put it here. We can change the position of it and we'll move the sun to over there. And now if we want a cloud or a couple clouds, we just left click on the cloud drawing, drag it over to column three. The reason we're not putting it in column one, if we put it down in column one, then we'll just see the cloud all by itself. The way the columns work in the X sheet is everything uh, horizontally gets overlapped on top of each other. So I'm going to delete that one just and then we'll go back to this cloud and resize it. So we go to scale using the animate tool and then we just left click and go in towards the center of it to scale is what we're doing. And then we change this to position and we can move it around. And what's nice about this is we could have a cloud off to the side here. We can scroll over to column four Oh, and if we just click on column four like I just did, you notice our level strip goes away and it says there's no current level. So to get back to the drawings in our level B, we just go to this drop down and go to B. And then we can see our drawings, we can choose. And then maybe I want to bring in the cloud again. I'll left click the cloud, bring it in. So now I have the cloud again. But now I'm just looking at the drawing, whatever I have selected. If I want to look at uh, what's happening in frame one of our animation, I can click over here. And now I can actually scale this. I hope this is making sense. I, I think it probably is. And so we can put this cloud. And maybe we want to change this now and have this cloud be maybe even smaller and have it be right here. OK. So then what we can do is we have this scene here that will look pretty nice. We can we could go in and color it too and do all kinds of things. But I'm just keeping it basic right now. Um, we have this scene that we could use, and now we could actually draw. We could do, uh, let's go File, New Level, and call this Person. If we want to animate a person on top of this, well, now we're working in New Level Person. We have a blank drawing, and it put this person over here in column five. So we have all these columns now that are just overlapping on top of each other. So now we can actually draw as if he's here on this scene, we can draw a person in here. And now whatever this, whatever we do with this person will happen independently of every other object on this scene. Does that make sense? So if we want to, if we go down to frame two now, everything disappears, everything. And we can draw the second frame of what this person is gonna see. If we do onion, onion skin, we can see, we can like redraw this person and have them start to do something different. But if we want to see, if we want the background to still be there and be the same, what we have to do, I'm going to resize this a little bit so we can see more of these columns. We select, hold down shift, and select all four of these, and there's a little gray handle that appears. We can just drag this down, and so as long as, as long as, as far as we drag it down, it'll just stay constant. So now we have this happening, and the background is all staying the same. So now we can just go ahead and keep drawing our person right here. We just go down and just keep drawing, and this is if we're, if we're doing frame by frame. And then pretty soon here, I'll show you a way that we can automatically move some of these objects differently. And again, the nice part about this is if ever we change something, like if we want, if, if we don't like the way the sun's looking, we can go in and, and make a change to it real quick by just clicking on the actual drawing of the sun, turn off onion skin. And then we can go in and we can just change, grab the eraser, and we can you know, change a part of this drawing to be different. Mm -hmm. And then it will, then the, the, the sun has that change now on every frame of our animation. Now I'm going to drag this just so we can see just that part of the animation I just did there. And let's pl uh, play back. So now we have a little bit of animation happening here with just the character and the background is staying the same. Now you might be wondering, like, why did I do that? I could have just drawn all of these on the same drawing if they're going to stay the same anyway. And that's because we don't have to have them stay the same. We could actually move uh, these. In the next video, uh, we're going to talk more about 
uh, doing automated animations and having like these clouds move across the sky by themselves without having to redraw them every time. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this informative. Go ahead and uh, leave your comments and questions below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.